The tattoo helps me keep 9-11 alive. It's important for people to remember. You know, that building went down plus, you know, 3,000 plus people, you know, in, in a second. I was in the South Tower, I was in Tower 2 on the 78th floor. I was sitting at my desk, so my view out my window was the Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge. Um, I felt a little vibration, kind of like, like the air conditioner kicking on, but not really. Um, a couple minutes later out my window, I saw papers flying. And at that height, you're not supposed to see much. We were 800 feet in the air or over. In that morning, I was home laying in bed, listening to the radio, you know, beautiful summer day. And I heard, was listening to a radio program and I heard them talk about a plane hitting the tower. And I just laid in bed thinking, eh, stupid pilot, you know, what a mistake, not realizing the enormity of the situation. By the time I got to the living room to even see the news myself, my wife screamed that a second plane had hit the, t uh, the Twin Towers. And that's when I knew it was uh, something real was going on. So I had said to my wife I couldn't stay home anymore and that it was time to go to work. I called my mom. She was like, your brother's not home yet. He's missing. I'm like, ma. He'll be fine. And I really believe that. That was our biggest hope that day, that we would find somebody that was alive. Um, I think it was about day three that I was down there that finally it was, I think exhaustion was, it was beyond exhaustion at that point. And they had started sending us home. We found out that his engine company got there moments, minutes before the South Tower fell. But he ran into a friend of his that he knew who worked in the building, who was running out when they were running in. And he stopped him and said, John, John, what are you doing? Don't go in there, it's terrible. And he just had a big smile and said, we're going in, it's our job. When I look at the news and see those buildings thinking someone's running into that, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. But I saw a lot of people originally getting Tattoos that were very much about, you know, the fire department or the police department or the American flag. And I knew right away that that didn't really speak to me. What's the best way of saying it? I didn't, he was my brother, he wasn't a fireman. You know, so I didn't want to make him just that, like the symbol that was everywhere. And then I also thought, I don't want something so obvious because if I'm, you know, five years after the fact, if I'm away on vacation, I don't want someone to see it and know right away. I got this one because people know what this is. So people always come up to me and say, oh, I love your tattoo, can I take a picture of it? And my answer is always yes, but you need to take a picture of this one too because this is the one that counts. And people, on, under, they see the name, they understand that. Bob was the vice president. Um, he didn't get out. Um, old stubborn guy, I didn't think he would leave. Jill Mara Campbell, when I was leaving, she was on the phone trying to figure out what was going on. And she didn't get out. And her son Jake crawled that day for the first time on September 11th, and she never saw him crawl. And the other person was Steven Weinberg, he was with me. We were leaving together, 
and he forgot something in his office and he didn't get out. I remember going to meet the tattoo artist who was doing it for me and he looked at it and I was getting, it's down my spine and he looked at it and said, this is gonna hurt. I said, oh yeah, yeah, I know. He's like, no, 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 it's your spine. It's gonna hurt. But that was sort of my intention too, to feel the pain. Yeah, not to compare the pain, of course, but I was like, yeah, I want it to hurt. I want it to be in a painful spot and I want it, you know, and it's mostly black and it just goes down my spine. And for me, it worked because it's sort of abstract. So, you know, the meaning of it even can change over the last 20 years for me, but it still symbolizes loss and growth at the same time. I think that's the last I heard from the doctor that day because everything kind of just went blank after that, after hearing the magic word cancer. It didn't make sense to me that I had cancer at such a young age. So what we did is we wound up taking samples of the cancer cells and submitting it to the World Trade Center Health Fund. It turns out that my cancer was a direct result of the time that I spent at Ground Zero. So unfortunately, 9-11 uh, gave me cancer. So uh, up top, inside the, the red die of this cross, it has my son's DNA inside of it. And back here, uh, inside of each one of the red jewels on the shield cross, it has uh, my, daughter, my daughter Isabella's DNA inside of it. And then most important of all, the one that's closest to my heart, inside of each one of these jewels on the blade and chalice has the, the DNA of uh, my wife, my loved one, Jessica. This is my way of making people remember the people, what happened that day and the people who died. Because when I walk around like this and they see this, they're gonna think about it. And that to me is very important. 20 years later, I think it's really important to tell the story about 9-11. Every day I have to face it. I think it's really important to talk about the sickness because so many more people are still getting sick to this day. It's important for people who were, you know, younger then, to understand the world they were born into and grew up in because of that, but to recognize also the 3,000 plus people and you know, take that outward to their families and friends and coworkers, all that pain and who those people were who were gone. You know, that building went down plus, you know, 3,000 plus people, you know, in, in a second. Mm -hmm.